السلام علیکم امید ہے آپ سب خیریت سے ہوں گے آج جائٹکس کا لاسٹ ڈے ہے چار دن کدھر گئے کچھ پتہ نہیں چلا کیونکہ اتنا بیزی ہو جاتا ہے جائٹکس کے آپ کو بالکل ٹائم کا اندازہ نہیں ہوتا اور آج پھر واک تھرو کریں گے ڈفرینٹ ہال کا اور اس کے بعد جائیں گے ایکسپیرینس مارکیٹنگ ڈیزائن اسٹیج جو ہے جو مین اسٹیج ہے جائٹکس دبئی ہاربر کی اور آج بہت سے اسپیکرز اور ڈیلیگیٹس دوبارہ سے آ رہے ہیں اور بہت ہی زیادہ ڈسکشنز ہونے والی ہیں تو وہ آپ کو ڈسکشنز بعد میں دکھائیں گے پہلے ایک واک تھرو کرتے ہیں اور پھر دکھاتے ہیں آپ کو ڈسکشنز
you ready for it? What an amazing opportunity for all of us. Amidst the busyness of our working lives, I know how much you've all got on. We're taking this opportunity to come together, to reflect, to connect, to have a day which is going to give us tips and takeaways, stories and simulations, so much inspiration and ideas. So I'm hoping at the end of today we're all going to walk away feeling a little bit more energised, inspired and ready to lead positive change together. For those of you who don't know the Marketing Society that well, we are an incredible global community of marketeers who are leading the conversation in their businesses. People who make an impact and who want to make a difference. And days like today are very, very important because there is one certainty for all of us in the year ahead, in our businesses, in our lives, in the world. That one certainty is change. And when we know that the world, that business, that our lives are going to continue to keep changing, we need to make sure that we are the ones managing that change. No, leading that change. Marketeers are the
doing it for others primarily. We're doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for our people. We're doing it for our economy. We're doing it for our environment. And we're doing it for the greater good. So. Thank you. Thank you. There was a wonderful line that was up there of travel challenges prejudice, which I yes. think is. Mark Twain said, travel is fatal to, pre to prejudice. And I, I, I have a live example of that. I had a, a colleague of mine from my HSBC days who was the CMO of the Mandarin Oriental and was going to a Tir'iyya to look at venues and potentially to start up there. And, excuse the language, she was shit scared of, of even you know, landing in the country, let alone going around the country. And she has been a massive advocate. And you're absolutely right. The moment you get past that prejudice and actually take the leap to experience, uh, you see wonderful things. So thank you for that, for that wonderful video. Alex, uh, back to you. you, you know, you've, you've had a wonderful career in various organizations, various backgrounds. Um, you know, you spent the last three years now um, at, uh, at PIF. Um, I want to get a sense of, you know, what if you apply from the, what you've learned in the past to what you're doing today? And how applicable is it? I mean, the scale of what you did in the past it's probably big, but you know, I think PIF is stratospheric in terms of scale. Um, you know, are you doing the similar things? Or what have you changed to make all the function work better? Um, yeah, I think I probably disappoint every marketeer right now, telling them that they aren't special and everything what you do in one industry is fairly straightforward to transfer as well to other industries and other organizations. And Mohammed and I spoke yesterday very briefly. Um, about his career, his career with um, Procter, who was speaking about the four Ps. And the four Ps is something what we have as well. We don't really look at product plays, but we've trans translated it into our activities as well. When we started from not just being part of, it, of a narrative, but really having PIF creating the narrative. So the four Ps, what we have, you all know these Ps as well, is A, have a strategy, or one is having a strategy. You need to know what you're going for. If you don't have a strategy, then good luck. Second thing, and I'm being a German, you've heard from my, from my accent, it's um, operational excellence. And I guess as a German, you know, we have somewhere the, the processes in our, in our DNA. But it's very important, especially if we see right now the, the growth what we have gone through, the pace what we have at the fund setting up a marketing department at PI. Marketing skills have been joined TikTok at the beginning of 2021, where she need, now leads the uh, the role of the, the business marketing for TikTok in this region. So Annie, please join me. Thank you. Well, this skill 
actually is a skill as old as time. And if we go back to 400 BC, Plato said, those who tell stories rule society. And let's face it, who doesn't love a good story? Stories move us, they shape us. In fact, they are how we've learned about many things. I have two daughters, and when they were two, I wanted to teach them about lying, and how not to lie, basically. And I leaned in on a story, the story of the boy who cried wolf. So far, my this is then, still working. Let's see as we go into teenage years. But stories basically have the ability to take visions, to take ideas, and to reach audiences, to move at scale across cultures, across boundaries, across, across generations, and to influence the masses. Because stories are really the most entertaining form of information sharing. But that got me thinking, is it really just a form of information sharing? Is it that stories are just the vehicle? Is the information the core of the whole thing? And stories are just used to take uh, information from one place to another? A journalist set out to answer exactly that question. When do you see there is a need? How do you, how do you define that this is a moment in time that there is a change that you said, listening to your consumers, listening to your staff? Are there other things that we should be aware of that we're noticing that you know, would make you think differently in terms of there's a need now for, some, for us to do things differently? Look, from, from my side, there are changes that uh, you can change and changes you just have to accept as it is a global company and today just understand and see the change it's way easier because we have these internal uh, portals and linkedin channels and you know like explaining the change to people it's easier but again coming from the global company it's not that everything that the global company is doing you have to do and sometimes being a smaller setup office uh, across the huge company that has 660,000 employees, it's great because you can implement some things. For example, we are the only Volkswagen Group company in the world who approves work from abroad, which means this is the change that we are now driving and showing pros and cons to all other companies, Volkswagen Group in the world. So sometimes being small allows you to do faster change or only to experiment or to see if it's working. So it's really, again, you listen, you feel, and then you try to do what is the best for your team, for your culture, and for the business overall. But uh, it's just sometimes there is no plan, plan when change will happen. And do you think if, if scale is what allows you to be able to do that here because- 100%. What happens when you grow? Yeah. That's the, that's the challenge, right? Because I think I've worked in a global role, a regional role, and a local role, so I've, I've probably given every excuse of, you know, we're different, um, you know, but it, but it is, you know, this part of the world has allowed entrepreneurship. Technology and human resources really ever since. And now with e and um, like honestly, it's, it's very impressive with this transformation and journey over the past few years. Uh, one at Harvard Business Review just made a case study about you and, and uh, e and uh, around fostering culture and the cultural transformation. So I want to a little bit deep dive into that, but also being on four for the first time as a brand. But even in addition to that, is uh, being one of the top and most loved brands from a brand finance point of view. So tell us why did E and do this journey? And obviously, if some of you are not familiar in this region, E and uh, was formerly into Salad. It was our first telecom in the UAE. It was formed in 1976. Uh, So it's, it's really a remarkable transformation, it starts and ends with people, and it doesn't actually start the last few years, it starts in 1976. So it's a salat, which in Arabic is connectivity, uh, really started as the nation's first telecommunications company. And from 1976 to 1983, in 1983 we were the first mobile network in the Middle East, so that was our launch. Fast forward to 1995, first internet services in the Middle East. Fast forward to 2020, uh, fastest mobile network on earth. So you're taking a company in a country, in a nation that's just about 50 years old and leapfrogging every few years through technology and innovation. Now, how do you have innovation? Everybody. 
most people think that empathy is something that we reserve for your friends or your family, but it was Satya Nadella that said, this is an existential business priority. We cannot grow our brands, we cannot build campaigns if we don't understand each other. We need to balance
But in two years' time, as I want to come to Dubai, there's this place, it's got a pink building, it's called Atlantis, and that's where I want to go. Can I prove that that was effective at the time? Probably not. There's a lot of wastage. But in time, marketing by definition is a latent effect. That's why brands like Coke, who are 131 years old, still spend 7 to 10 percent. take up a very small portion of the human brain. But it's when you need that information that you go and retrieve it. And it's up to us, up to, us to be there. You know? And there's this plague in our industry now of, I want a return and I want it now. But ultimately, brand equity and brand building is a return. It's just a much longer return on investment. So, what are we missing in our industry? Not that we're missing it, but it's definitely become uh, a much uh, underrated skill. Courage. We are moving into a world of performance and moving away from being courageous.